Serious, Redditors who've found a secret passage, tunnel, or room. What's your story? My high school was originally an all-boys training academy for Canadian soldiers during World War I. There was a tunnel built before the war under the school that connected it to other parts of downtown. Apart from the crazy high levels of asbestos, it is the home of dozens of piles of folders, records and letters all documenting the lives of World War I soldiers who trained at my school and ended up dying in World War I. It is quite spectacular and the tunnel itself is supposedly many kilometers long and super scary. Well, go and make yourself a cough because this is a large story. I live in Ciudadavita. A lovely town constructed during Perón's presidency is in Argentina nearly 60-50 years ago. The town purpose was to give home to all the army soldiers and police officers who were looking for a place to build a family. It's located in the west of Buenos Aires metropolitan area. Because of its purpose the town is also kind of a stronghold with barracks in one side. Some water towers with sniper like positions and forest on the other side. So one day while doing my bed and tidying my room I fell and there was a metallic sound in the ground. Specifically in the wooden floor of the wardrobe. I called my parents and with the help of my father we discovered there was a tunnel behind our house that has exits all around my neighborhood. Sadly the police make us cover it with cement so it's closed until something happens. TLDR. There's tunnels, barracks and water towers with sniper places all around my city. There's a trap door behind my wardrobe and the tunnels go around all my neighborhood. The police close it with cement. TT. I'm not a native English speaker so forgive my orthography sins. Water. Comma specifically. My mother-in-law is from Buenos Aires and I'm tickled that you managed to type this comment in her accent. We found a doorway behind our refrigerator. No fun story though. The previous owner remodeled the kitchen and changed where the stairs to the basement are located. Instead of covering the doorway with drywall, they put cabinets in the fridge in front of it. We almost bought a house like that, except the stairs went to the attic. My parents house had to, well sort of, there was an old basement that was structurally unsound and so my brother and I were forbidden from going down there. I only saw it once, it was dark and damp. Sorry that's all I remember, I was very young. When I was 6 my parents had it filled in and repaired so all that remained was the cupboard under the stairs and a concrete slab. The upstairs attic was also our playroom. And a really cool playroom because it was the size of the nearly the entire house so a huge area. There were holes in the walls you could crawl through and end up in the void between our house and the neighbor's house. Nothing there but cobwebs and dust. After we moved out the new owners converted it into a master bedroom. It doesn't really count, but in the garden was an old disused well that had been covered with a metal cover. You could pry it open and peer down inside. Of course we weren't supposed to, but we did all the same and somehow never became the next baby Jessica. They had that one secured and filed in properly shortly before we moved. Not so much a secret room, but more connections between closets. As kids, my siblings and I figured out that the closets in our basement were all connected. They were all in the same corner and the contractor had just never bothered to wall them off. Why not? They are just storage. This led to some very creative games of hide and seek, and also the ability to steal soda and ice creams from the spare fridge, which my parents kept in an otherwise locked closet. It took them years to figure out that we were getting in from the laundry and the toy closet. Kind of not exciting but for a bunch of rowdy kids, very fun. It made laser tag super fun because it let us move between rooms and sneak up on each other. When I was a kid, my neighbors and I would play in houses that were under construction in our neighborhood. One house. I noticed that the area under the back staircase had been closed off by bookshelves. Then I pushed on one and realized there was now a hidden room there. I never got to go in after the place was finished, but I guess that family has a panic room. Or just a little hidey hole. Finally, something I have an answer for. When I was a freshman in university, the dorm I was in had laundry facilities in the basement. As I was lugging my clothes down the basement hall, I noticed that there was a hatch in the tile hallway that made a hollow and reverberating thud when stepped on. Being a dipshit freshman, I tried to open it. No luck though, the hatch was heavy and crusted over with disuse. Went upstairs, got a strong friend, and we lifted it together. Beneath it was near pitch darkness, but we just entered the age of flashlight apps for phones that didn't have their own. 
So we lit it up and saw what looked like a dank, not that kind of dank, concrete shaft, covered in cobwebs, dust, and weirdly wet everywhere. It extended under the floor in one direction, with a drop off in about 15 feet. So we gathered a few more brave souls, set my roommate as a lookout for staff, and in case the hatch slammed shut on us, and dropped in, we were surrounded by plumbing, and it smelled like it. We crawled forward and found that the drop off was only a few feet, and there was a plastic chair at the base of it, presumably to help land and get back up. It looked like it hadn't been touched in years. After we dropped down, the ceiling stayed the same height, so we could walk properly. It was a long walk though, and ended in a metal door. Opening that, we found ourselves in what seemed to be the housekeeping storage. Several expansive rooms of supplies from toiletries to road salt to all sorts of cleaning plumbing electrical equipment. On the other side of the storage rooms, we opened another door and came out in the basement on the far side of the building. All told, no monsters, no chase scene, just dust and toiletries, which we stole a few of, in case the dorm bathroom ever ran low, which it did. Made for an exciting nerf war when we snuck up on our enemies from behind since they expected us from our own side. My grandmother married an old money lawyer about 20 years ago. Visited the house he had lived in alone for ages. This house has been in his family for many generations. Discovered a hidden door in his upstairs law office. You had to basically crawl to fit in it. And it would take you about 30 feet and led to a hidden door behind a plant. Which was just over a staircase. I found out later that he had some unsavory characters as clients over the years, and the escape route was so he could get to the lower level of the house and run out the front door if he had to. On the same trip, while taking a crap, I noticed an original 13 star US flag nailed to a bathroom door in the basement. Literally, an original threadbare flag in a damp bathroom that probably only got used once or twice a year. I mentioned to him that he should probably find a better home for it, and he was genuinely surprised, not realizing original flags are kind of a big deal. A year later I heard they had it professionally framed and gave it to a museum, so there's that. In the same basement there was also a land grant laying on a table personally signed by either Grover Cleveland or one of the other presidents from that era. Old money types are freaking weird. I go to a university in Ontario, Canada that was built in the 60s. The whole campus has a series of steam tunnels and old pedestrian tunnels that was used when the school opened so people could get around campus indoors. At some point the tunnels were closed but over the years people kept finding ways in to explore, party, graffiti, some their reefer cigarettes, etc. One of the older frash bosses for the art students used to take first years he deemed worthy on little excursions through the old tunnels. He knew them well and by the end, the frash were always so disoriented with the maze of steam tunnels and back stairwells that he would finally take them to a door and open it and they would be on the roof of one of the tallest buildings on campus. This is the same university where they found the tunnel dug in a forested area on campus complete with sub pumps, generator, and lights. A lot of friends of friends knew the guys that dug it and it was just a bunch of engineering students. The police and media were worried it was tied to a terrorist plot on the Pan Am games being held there that year but it was just used by students to smoke weed and hang out in, primarily just cause they could. My friend and I found these tunnels at our boarding school. They were basically crawl spaces but every once in a while they would open up to bigger spaces where you could get comfortable. There was writing in one of these bigger spaces indicating that other students of the past had found the tunnels as well. But only about every 10 years or so. There was a note from some who had snuck out of school to attend a Grateful Dead show in the 70s and others from the 50s and 60s. We discovered the tunnels in 2006. They ran all over the school, which was a great way to sneak around. My boarding school had strict rules about guys visiting girls dorms and vice versa. The best part of all was a tunnel we found that led directly into the school's dining hall. We would often take whole cakes or bagels and cream cheese, anything, really. Back to our dorms and our friends never had any idea how we did it. I took photos at the time but sadly I lost them all. At my local bookstore, there's a hidden room. When I was younger I didn't have money to buy any books, so I'd go into a back room on the top floor that had an entire shelf dedicated to Sherlock Holmes. One day I was reading one of the books and I thought it would be hilarious if there was a fourth wall behind the bookcase. I stood up, 
walked to the shelf and gave it a push. The bookcase pivoted and opened up into a very Sherlock-esque study room. There was a collection butterflies on the wall and a microscope and slides on the desk. It was really exciting to find. I went back a week later and tried to enter again but it was latches or something and I was never able to go inside again. As a kid growing up I lived in a small town in western NY, about an hour south of Rochester. Town name, Naples. A friend and I were exploring his basement and we found a boarded up tunnel. Looked like a boarded up window. There was a cord of wood stacked in front of it. We finally got the boards off and discovered a hole that went about 30 feet under the house toward the road. Main street. We asked his parents what it was and they told us it was a link to the old underground railroad that slaves used to escape to the north. Actually to Buffalo and then across the Canadian border. We did some research at the town library and from everything we could find it appeared to be true. I guess there once was a network of tunnels under the town and this house was on top of one of the pathways. Found an old disused train tunnel in South Wales with loads of burnt out cars from the 70s 80s. It's dad and I think it was part of an insurance scam business. A childhood friend lived in an old building that had been remodeled a lot a long time ago. A lot of the apartments were made from two apartments that had been merged together. There was a back hallway that wasn't used a whole lot, but we discovered the door that pulled down the attic steps. The attic was just a wide space over all the top floor apartments and we found secret panels in the floor that led into what was now the kitchens of the apartments below. There were a bunch of very old liquor bottles and piles all around. He also found a secret compartment in his bedroom closet that was just big enough for a person to hide in. They remodeled when I was in my teens before that the hallway and lobby had red carpeting and red and gold velvet flocked wallpaper. My mom told me it had a history of being a brothel, which makes sense, but I never did any follow up sleuthing. I used to work for the local phone company. There was an old mental hospital in my town. Had like 30 buildings on it, but most were closed and abandoned. Only 3 or 4 still were being used. But the main phone lines for the whole complex came into one of the abandoned buildings. So we'd be let in there to do work. What we found was all of the buildings were connected to each other through a series of underground tunnels. We'd each do a little exploring. But it could be easy to get lost. So I never went too far. One of my co-workers decided to go and see as much as he could. The tunnels had no lights. Deep in one all of a sudden he finds a guy standing in the dark crying. He freaks out and starts to slowly back up. Then he hears people calling out a name. He realizes one of the patients had wandered off and gotten lost. The guy was actually more scared of my co-worker than the other way around. He yelled out and they came and got the patient. And warned the worker to not wander in T-tunnels anymore. TL. DR. Co-worker found psychiatric patient in a tunnel under an old mental hospital. A friend of mine rented a house near the university in town. Not sure when it was built, but anything that still worked hadn't been replaced. Old fixtures, original flooring, it even still had the original coal cellar, complete with piles of coal, and police system for bringing them up from the basement. Upstairs they were all sealed off during subsequent remodels, which was only accessible via trapdoor in the back room. <laughs> Not very exciting, but very handy for rescuing drunk people who lock themselves in the archaic bathroom. More of a forgotten room than anything. I was working for a hospital that had expanded with an extra building, and part of the basement in the original building had simply stopped being useful for anything. I got sent down there one day to check out a particular room and see if it had enough power sockets to make it useful for a backup crisis management office. I don't think anyone had been in there since the 1970s. There was texture wallpaper and thick carpet, which are two things you're not likely to find anywhere in a modern hospital. There was also a thing in the corner that looked like a real old computer, which had add-on boards made of components fixed to balsa wood soldered directly to the motherboard. It was labeled fire control and still powered on, so I didn't touch it. Past that room was a tunnel which was only secret to the public. Across the road from the hospital was a medical school. That tunnel made it possible for them to store their cadavers in the hospital morgue. 
The tunnel had hot and cold water pipes and gas lines running along the ceiling, so it felt like a sauna in there. The rumor at my college was that there were tunnels connecting all the original buildings on campus. A small campus. Long story short, I got my hands on a master key and went looking for the tunnels. Turns out, the story was true. In an old utility closet in the basement of the main building, there was a hatch in the wall. Ignoring the asbestos warning, my friends stayed at the entrance and I went in. It felt like it went on forever. This concrete tunnel big enough to sit upright in. There were pipes running along the top. Metal pipes that probably held wires, not plumbing. It didn't fork but one time. And eventually I hit an end. A wooden hatch like the one I came in. Pushed it. I was in the basement laundry of the nearest dorm. Between the asbestos and the long crawl. I never went in again. I figured I'd gotten lucky once. And that was enough. This is going to get buried but in my house in college I lived on the third floor of a three story house. The roof was slanted with those small access panels to get to the roof or crawl space in case of repair. One of those panels was in my closet. While moving in, I threw a suitcase into my closet and the entire access panel, trim included, fell off. When I peeked in to see what the heck was going on, it was awesome. Apparently the guys that lived there before us turned the access area into a grow room for weed. When they left the house they pretty much left everything. There was myelin tarps. A water purification system and air filters along with pots and dead plants. Needless to say, we made excellent use of the secret space. Story time. I live in a converted carriage house that was built by a wealthy inventor in the late 1890s. I'm not too sure about the entire history of the building, though I know it was used as doctor's offices and other utilities through the years. About a month ago, my boyfriend moved into the building and has his belongings in one of the five bedrooms. We were having some electrical problems in that room, a majority of the outlets don't work in there, so we decided to go into the basement to maybe reset the switches. So my sister and I go down there. We do find the boiler electrical room but there are no labels on the switches and don't want to risk resetting or turning off the whole building's power. However, we noticed that there was an open door at the end of the hallway and decided to check it out. Ended up finding a men's public bathroom, with urinal, public water fountain outside the room, and all, that looked like it hadn't been used for at least 20 years. At a friend's house, was messing around. I had to have been younger than 10, we were playing hide and seek or messing around and hiding in the couch cushions, and I went into the laundry room in the basement, looking for a hiding place. There was a series of storage shelves with boxes on them, and I moved some stuff and oh hey, there was a squeeze through to another end of the room. Up three six plants with lamps. An adult found me and ushered me out, I resumed playing, I dismissed it, except to sorta wonder now and then about the secret back room I was sure I remembered, and later sorta dismissed it as being a subset of my friend's bohemian dad's extensive bonsai plant collection. Took me until I was about 25 to think on it a little harder than that and realize that my friend's dad was probably growing some pot. I'm a little late to the party but I always jump at the opportunity to tell this story. I was working at a 100 plus year old abandoned farmhouse several years ago. My co-worker and I were told to find the well for the house, since they were thinking about developing the property. After looking for a while we figured it might be in the old house. I grabbed my flashlight and we headed in through a window that wasn't boarded up very well. The place was creepy. The second floor had a burnt goat carcass and a pentagrams drawn in ash all over the walls. So that started the chills and goosebumps. We eventually made it to the basement where I almost fell into the very deep well at the end of the steps. Not sure how deep it was but our 25 feet tape wouldn't hit the bottom. Anyways my curiosity was still running wild so we went searching around the basement. My co-worker noticed that one of the stone walls didn't go up to the floor joist and he pointed out that it was probably a fake wall. Good call on his part. He boosted me over the wall and I helped him climb over. The first room was empty and nothing exciting. Just dark, wet and cold. Looking around there was another wall with an opening. I decide to go first again and I was boosted over the wall. My co-worker thought to be funny to hang on to my flashlight for a while while I stumbled in the dark. Finally he tossed it over to me and that's when I began freaking out. The room had chains built into the walls with wrist and ankle shackles. 
The walls had scratch marks from nails I'm guessing from someone trying to escape. I lasted about 30 seconds in the room before I started my dash over both walls the well and right out of the window we climbed through to get in that creepy house. I don't think it was just the shackles or the scratch marks that creeped me out but the ice cold chills that shot down my spine like there was something truly evil lurking about in that place. Lived in a small community that used to be army barracks during World War II. Most of it was being converted to suburbia, but the original barracks buildings were still there and converted into sketchy apartments. Underneath all these buildings were tunnels that led to each building. The main base was converted at our general store bar. I went to the bar and the owner, who was very friendly, told us about it and showed me the entrance. But I wasn't allowed to go in, it was cool and kind of creepy imaging these secret tunnels under where I take my runs. At my childhood home in the basement of our house my dad kept his office. It was different from the rest of the house the floor and walls were cement like and there was a door hatch in the far right hand corner of the room that was a hole that literally went underground. It creeped me out as a kid so when I was older I asked my dad about it and if it was something they had specifically done to the house. Nope. It had been there since they moved in and figured it was like a bombing shelter that the previous owners had put in. Dad said going down into the hole led to a room big enough for three people but didn't make sense because there was no ventilation anywhere. It was weird and is still weird and is covered by storage bins now so my niece won't happen to stumble upon it. I used to work at the Naval Academy. You can travel across the yard on a rainy day and travel through the buildings without getting wet if you're creative. Few people know that underneath the Naval Academy are a series of large tunnels which allow you to travel pretty much anywhere on the yard while underground. They have graffiti dating back to the Vietnam War days and comments about banning the bomb. The people who work there refer to the tunnels as the Ho Chi Minh Trail. There are rooms down there which have ceilings 20 feet high. Keep in mind this is all underground. At my grandparents old country house, there was a removable piece of board in the back of one of the upstairs bedroom closets, and behind it was a small passageway that led to an open space with a window on the side of the house. I crawled in once and only once, because on the way out I glanced to the side and realized the corners of the corridor were filled with giant freaking huntsman spiders, like, a dozen palm sized huntsmen, and that was just the one corner. Frick that. My family had a finished basement growing up, but as a kid I was afraid of it. Our shower was broken once and I was forced to go use the basement shower. While down there I used to see a glow come from behind a drawer. When I was probably about 18 I had a vague memory of the glow so I went to investigate. I moved the drawers out of the way and a board was blocking a hole in the wall. In that hole was a secret underground room that my parents had dug out to grow pot. The grow lights were all gone but there were some very dried up pot plants still there. I think they stopped growing when my brother was going through the D.A.R.E. program and he found some herb in a drawer and said he would call the cops on my parents if it was marijuana lol. My family moved into this house and while I was putting up some clothes I found little cracks in the wall that turned out to be the outline of a door. Pulled it open and found an amazing attic like room with air conditioning and a window with a beautiful view of the mountains and surrounding city. Laid out some carpet and made habit of writing on the walls little quotes I liked. We moved out a few years later a little faster than I thought and couldn't erase the writing so I just drew a little your turn with an arrow to the pencil I left for the next kid that found it. Was really drunk at a bar one night and was looking for an ATM. In my drunken quest I opened this blocked off door that I assumed, for some reason, thanks to drunk logic, would lead me to the ATM. Turns out, it led to another bar that had closed down. I ended up getting my friends to come join me. We played our own music and found beer in the fridge, which was pretty great. Never found the ATM though. Not really that crazy, but I felt pretty badass. I was 17 and my dad was starting a new job in another state. We went over Christmas break to look at model homes in a new development. My mom is both demanding and a big spender of my father's hard earned money. So with my dad's increase in pay, we were looking at rather large houses. One house we went to had a courtyard in front with outdoor fireplace and wrought iron gate. The inside had tall ceilings with a giant kitchen, gas stoves, tons of marble counter space, 
a landing with built-in bookshelves and window seat. My favorite part, a playroom upstairs, six bedrooms total, and a theater room complete with popcorn machine and teared seating. There was a door under the stairs that seemed like a linen closet, but it was locked. My parents told me to leave it alone, but I have always been too curious. While they weren't looking, I picked the lock with various items in the model home. The door opened to a set of curved stairs going downward. There we found two spare bedrooms, a full bathroom, a game room with a pool table, and a play area kid clubhouse thing built under the stairs. The basement opened out to the backyard that had a koi pond and running 10 feet waterfall. We spent an hour down there exploring and having fun until my parents got nervous. We realized it was the offices for the salespeople. TL. DR. Found hidden basement in model home that made it even more badass. We didn't move there. Back in elementary school, there was this door about 15 feet off the ground in the auditorium. On the stage. No stairs. So my second grade friends and I stacked up a bunch of stage props and climbed into the mysterious door. It was an air conditioning unit, but the 7th graders had morphed it into a clubhouse and had hung out there. All of the markings were from the 80s, and I was in elementary in the 2000s. Pretty neat stuff. My aunt's house has one. You go into my cousin's closet and there's a small door. Throgger that door is another room that's the size of another bedroom but honestly used as a junk room. I liked going to it to sleep in the middle of the day cause you can hear people in the hall if you're in a bedroom most of the time, but not in the extra room. And I had the fluffy beanbag type thing that turned into a mattress. It was probably some of the most peaceful midday naps I've had. Not really a tunnel or room or anything that big, but there are a couple secret storage areas in my house. Found them both a few years ago. One of them is in the wall behind a bookshelf. Nothing was found there. The other one is beneath a cupboard in my kitchen that held a couple hundred bucks cash and a note from the previous owner of the house. Basically saying to take care of the house and wishing us good luck. My parents have this old house that was made in the 1910s and at one point was used by the local hospital for overflow. When I was around 13 my dad and I were working on putting insulation in the third floor for winter when we stumbled upon a hinged wall in the bathroom. I should clarify that we use our third floor as an attic and rarely go up there except to get stored items so we never really did a lot of investigating. So we push this small door open and there's very small, narrow hallways going around the perimeter of the entire third floor. There was this section where the chimney came through and I wanted to see what was on the other side so I squeezed through with a flashlight. On the other side was a small room, maybe 5x5 feet with a small desk and chair, a little lamp, and a bunch of books and old photos of people. We have no clue what the room was used for but it was built inside a wall and I would guess no one was meant to find it. Probably going to get buried, but we'll post anyway. When I was younger, like 9 or 10, I was at a house owned by a friend of my mom's and she had a cupboard armoire that she kept all of her china in. If you closed this cupboard and twisted the handles, then reopened it, the doors would pull the front section of the cupboard with them and reveal a door into a hidden hallway of the house. It was pretty neat. Not so much a secret passage or tunnel but a lot of secret or undiscovered areas rather. As a kid I went to a school field trip in SE Asia where the school was and still is an orphanage and also houses a convent and chapel. The compound was old, supposedly built in the 1960s or late 50s and took over at one point much of the land surrounding it. We've heard rumors of the school grounds being built over a cemetery, which is not uncommon since that there were two memorial parks within a 3-5 block distance of each other. Many schools in the neighboring areas also had the same rumors being built on old burial grounds so we were kinda may about it as being an urban legend. On the two times I did a full field trip to this school, we literally saw tombstones and grave markers on the older sections of the compound. And since the school and other buildings were built over pre-existing foundations, you can see the older and some abandoned buildings flats with foundation cracks leading to crawl spaces that you can still see grave markers. TBH this school was for me a young paranormal explorer's dream. Sadly I never got to explore the older sections of the school as we were on a guided tour and found out years later that the school shut down in the late 2000s. 
I bought a complex in Boston's North End as an investor which was going to be turned into luxury apartments. We ended up finding a manhole type latch under the basement floorboards, which led to a long long concrete pathway that zigzagged and ended at the basement across the street, which had another latch under its floorboards. Initially we had been told it was part of the underground railroad and that slaves could travel in secret between buildings using it, but later found out it was actually supposed to serve as a fallout shelter for the previous owner and was built in the 70s. It was very eerie nonetheless and some dogs had burned to death inside. I once moved temporarily into a pretty huge house. My bedroom was a decent sized one with a single bed, desk, and drawers for clothes. One night my friend came over and asked me about a tiny door. I said it was probably where the electric meter was or something, but he insisted that we look. Turns out it was a whole other room, roughly the same size as my bedroom, no idea what it was for or why it was only accessible through a door the size of a piece of paper, but we got drunk in there. Cause what else are you gonna do? If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.